Are you a beginner interested in creating amazing AI art but don't know where to start? In this video, I will show you how to use Midjourney, a user-friendly AI art tool to create stunning works of art without any coding knowledge. To work with Midjourney, you must have the understanding of what is known as prompts. Now prompts are simple words, sentences, emojis, or images. It can also be a complex mixture of all of them and some of them. A well-crafted prompt can give you really unique results and some iconic images. But for now, we're going to be using the sunrise as an example to find different scenarios that we can work with to start off the whole journey of prompting. Initially, you would like to click on the chat bar and press on the slash. Once you click there, you're going to find the command lines with a bunch of different words. For today, we're going to click on the imagine prompt. When you click on the imagine, it's going to populate it with the word prompt. We're going to be using sunrise. Now, when that happens, like any text messenger, we just click enter and it gives out the prompt. We're sending a message to the Midjourney server. It's going to create renders until it's come to 100%. So you can see there are different renders of the images. I haven't added anything else. So we're going to start with a completely blank slate, sunrise. Now, once the image is done, you can see there are four images that Midjourney usually gives out. In some instances, it's a little different. We're going to talk about that in another video. But in this case, and generally, whenever even we would start, there would be four images like here, one, two, three, and four. Right down in the bottom, there's also U1, U2, U3, and U4 to upscale those images. And in the bottom, it is V1, V2, V3, and V4. That means variation one, variation two, three, and four. Now, these images are low resolution. So that is why you would want to upscale it to make it higher resolution. And the icon over here is for re-rolling. If one does not like the sunrise that we see over here, we can choose to re-roll the image and give us a completely different set of images from the prompt that we have initially given. In this case, the sunrise. Now looking at the images, I like image number three. In that case, I'm gonna go and upscale image number three. Image number one could be really nice if there could be a little bit of a variation there. So in that case, I'm going to click on variation for one. So V1, those two get populated and they're going to be creating those significant jobs. Each of these tasks are considered as jobs. Now, based on the variation that we got from V1, we can see the different variations. When we give a prompt with just one word without anything else or with an emoji, it gives Midjourney 100% control to interpret it the way it understands. In this case, this is how it understood what sunrise could be, and this is how it interprets it. I would like to make it a little more nuanced. So that's where we're gonna finesse it. Now, as I said, that this is from variation one, we can see these are the different changes as opposed to the previous image. Slight tweaks here and there. Now, if you look down over here, now this is the upscaled image of image number three. Now that said, you can then choose whether you would like to rate it like anything else. You love it, you like it, you don't like it or you dislike it. This also helps the Midjourney server to understand how the image is working overall, that we might need to re-roll it. Because honestly speaking, I kind of like this image. So a re-roll, as I said before, is nothing but just changing the configurations of the images and giving us a completely new set of images to work with. Now here I'm getting a variation of the mountain that was upscaled previously, but these are some slight variations that we're going to see. I can see that I do like image number two. I'm going to click on that. Now, as you can see, based on the first version, when we re-rolled, we've created what you would call the second version. And these are completely different configurations of images based on the first one. Again, everything is just done by using one word prompt. So in this example, I was be, I've been using sunrise. I'm clearly going to go for this one here. I'm going to upscale the fourth image. So it's going to be U4. So we have also upscaled one image. 
And now finally, I have the upscale version of the variation from the mountains from the first row. So based on the sunrises that I was seeing, I would say that I like this image. So I'm going to go and save the image. I'm going to save it. And then from the second row, we can also see the upscale version of this sunset, sunrise. It's a completely different sunrise. And I am going to save this image as well. We're going to be using those images in a bit. But the reason I wanted to save those images is because I want to do something else with those. But for now, I'm just trying to see and sift through, if I may say also curate, which sunrise of all these sunrises that we've been looking through is the best one, in my opinion. Based on that image, I found a variation. I'm going to upscale image three. At this point, you get the idea. A prompt, just a single word prompt, can generate so many different permutations and combinations. Now the image from the last variation, we have it upscaled. I'm going to save this one as well for later use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it. There we go. So now at this point, I have three images from one prompt, one word, without any interpretation from us. It was more of an image curation. So we did put a prompt, it was a word. But now I'm going to add some descriptions. So I'm going to go ahead again. I'm going to say slash imagine prompt. Instead of just saying sunrise, like we have done it so far, I'm going to add something else to it. So I'm going to add imagine a cat sitting on a beach looking at a sunrise. Now for us, this is grammatical, so we can see and understand the grammar. But for mid-journey, it will not be able to understand the grammar. It will just take the words. I'm going to press on enter. And now we have a completely different scenario. I have given it a little bit more to think of. I've given it a cat sitting on a beach looking at a sunrise. We still have the same sunrise. I just added a cat sitting on a beach looking at a sunrise. And there you have it. But let's do something else with it. Let's add a little bit more. And before that, I'm going to upscale just one of the images. So I'm going to go with U4. So I'm going to upscale U4. And while that's happening, I'm going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same prompt. A cat sitting on a beach. A cat sitting on a beach, looking at a sunrise. Now, this is all one prompt. But if I want to put it in a specific style, so what happens is, Midjourney can also reference from diff different kinds of artistic styles, like Leonardo da Vinci, Caravaggio, Picasso, Salvador Dali. So these kind of artistic styles can also be put into the image, giving it more context. In this regard, I'm going to say a cat sitting on a beach, looking at a sunrise, in the style of Leonardo Da Vinci. And then, if you notice, I've also put it as a comma because that's how you divide the first part and the second part of the prompt. I'm going to go ahead and save this image for our reference for another thing I will do before we end this video. But I'm going to add this as well. Make a variation and take the same prompt. But now, I'm going to say the word illustration. Just by using a different word that is a medium, you're going to see a completely different set of images. Now while all this time I was going behind and I was doing these upscales, I'm going to have one special trick that I'm going to show you at the end of this video. So do stick around for that because we're going to do something fun with that. I just said a cat sitting on a beach looking at a sunrise. As we can see, it's more illustrative. Two should be a good one. I'm going to upscale that. Image prompt breaks down into a couple of different ways in that it's how you have the image prompt, then you can have a text prompt, and at the end, you have something known as parameters, which we haven't covered in today's video, but do stay tuned to my channel because I'm going to be talking about parameters and the whole plethora of different parameter changes that we can work with. But for today, we're just tweaking with and tinkering with the sunrise and the cat. A simple prompt just to get started with and understand 
the world of prompting. As we can see, done. So I'm now gonna save this. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go and click on the blend. This is one quick tip that we can do. So when I click on blend, now you have two options of not prompts, but images. And now remember we had a couple of images that we had sorted from the previous prompts and the previous examples. I'm now gonna take two of those images and we're gonna literally blend them together. We can use up to five images, but for best case scenarios, to start with, it's always a good idea to have two images to work with. But you can do five image blends. However, also do remember that once you are putting a blend of two images, it's not possible to have prompt, like text prompts after that. There is another hack for that, which I will talk in another video. But for now, let's get our uh, images. So I had this image and I had the sunrise image. But I think I'm going to go with um, this one over here. So I'm gonna go with this one as our first image. And I'm gonna go with uh, this one. The image that we selected has a different kind of an art style. So I wanna see how it would blend those two together. And once we're done, then we're gonna click on enter. That's it. You blend those two together and we're gonna have a completely different image and a completely different prompt that was image based. So based on whatever we have given, the images that we chose, we can see a different point of view Mid Journey was able to conjure up. I'm going to definitely take image four. And there you have it. A various different ways without anything else, just text and some ideas from your own mind, you can create some stunningly beautiful, simple artwork which might be useful for you. It is quite the thing. We have just started scratching the surface. Do stay tuned because I'm gonna have a lot more. But before we leave, I'm gonna leave you with the final image that we've gotten. Thank you. I see you in the next video.